What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about how I set up my lights for my 3D product renders to have a photorealistic look. Let's get started. So, for this tutorial, I'll be using V-Ray and 3ds Max, but you really do not need to have any of those programs as I'll be using real world lighting techniques for products. And so you could just use that exact um, idea in your own 3D program of your choice. But let's get started. So, this is my scene, and I'm just going to come out of this camera here. This is my scene, pretty simple, and nine out of 10, you'd always start like this, and then you have like the full power to just build it from this into something really amazing. And one thing I always do before, I start putting my scene together is to come up with or to create like a mood board with different images that will help in achieving the exact look and feel I'm going for for the final render. Final render, actually, not render. <laughs> and here's what I have for this one, or what I had for this one. So you could you, you can see that my main view was going to be from the ground up. This is supposed to give it this really expensive and larger than life kind of feeling. Um, so I had images that would help in choosing the exact or the right focal length to achieve an image like that. And this image just shows that it's not just about rotating your camera to look at it from the ground up, but you need to get the exact focal length for it. It needs to look compressed, so it comes out looking better. And um, for my light setup, you can tell that I was going for a mysterious look. Lights, shadows, not so much lights in it, but just to make it look really good and mysterious. And then I had this image here. This was supposed to help with lighting liquid in it um i didn't want to just put any lights behind it or just leave it like that i was going for a particular look for it so you could tell that okay there's something inside this bottle there's liquid content in this bottle but at the same thing you're not 100 percent sure if it was lit separately or if it's just the bottle that's just making it look the exact way but yeah i had these images i put this together as like a really small um mood board just to reference it as like a really small um, mood board and um, yeah it also helped in my final render and I'll, I'll show you how in a bit so this is my scene really simple scene here and I'll start by activating my camera view here now you can you, you can see that I use the exact I don't know what I was talking about this whole larger than life or really expensive products kind of look. So we can see that we're seeing the bottle from the ground up, and this is just supposed to give it this really high, high end look and feel, honestly. And then we'll move to my lighting. Now, the way I like my product is I create separate lights for each object in it so that when something doesn't look right i know i know the exact light to look at and then tweak to get the exact result i'm looking for now for this one i started by creating a light on my background which is this now you can tell that this particular light wasn't doing too much it wasn't lighting up the entire scene it was just supposed to create like a gradient behind the bottle which is supposed to separate the bottle from the background and then give it this mysterious dark um really expensive product look now this light wasn't enough for me so i added one more light to it and this just made the gradient a little bit bigger than it was before so it looks like it's going from really dark brown so a lighter brown and coincidentally this particular um background light also helped in creating like a soft light for the content of the bottle so that worked well for me in my own in my own situation and then um i also created a new light for the box that my bottle was on now you can see that all the lights i'm creating here are creating this very round um 
gradient effects. The edges here are dark, but the middle, which is where the main product is, is lit. So I created the light for the content inside the bottle also. Now you can see that the light is bouncing from here to here and then to the top here. This is just to show that this is a glass material and then it's supposed to look realistic, like we said. And then I created a rim light. Now this was supposed to further separate the products from the background. And you can see that this light here just gives it its own um, shape basically you can tell that this there's a product here and there's a background behind that's far from it a bit so that's like the main idea behind that one and then i created another light now this is the light i was going to talk about i was going to focus on the most to talk about because this is what professional photographers use when shooting bottles mostly bottles um really shiny objects this is the light technique they use for it and I'll talk about this in a bit. So let me show you how I was able to create this exact sharp shape here. And then it goes from this sharp shape to a very soft light. So this particular light here just created this really smooth shape here. Just to show you that this object has a really nice curve here. It's not a 100% cylindrical. Well, it is cylindrical, but it's, it's not a normal regular cylinder it has curves at the top here and then i'll talk about how i was able to create that light effect now how i did it was to create a soft box reality if you're shooting bottles you use a strip box as your light modifier and then you put another soft paper in front of it and you rotate your, your, your strip box to I think to the right, yeah, to the right, just to create this really sharp edge here. And then because the light is going from this side to this side, it's it's it cuts it off at the edge of the strip box. And then the other part of it is the white art paper that is really soft and softens the light. So it goes from that sharp edge up onto this soft one here. So it just blends it in. And that is what creates this really nice lighting um, effect that you see here. Now, how did I create this in 3ds Max? I created a soft box in Max, added a gradient to it, and then I mapped this gradient to my light here. I'll show you what it should look like if I turned off the map. If I turn this off here, you'd see, let me see light 001, yeah. If I turn this off here, you'd see that it just gives it this really sharp reflection and this looks good to an extent but we're not going for just good we're going for a photorealistic look so this would have given it off as a 3d render as opposed to being an actual product that was shot in a studio so i added that gradient to it and that gave it this white to transparent look here and i'll show you how i how i placed it beside the product in a bit let me just do this here so this is my scene mm -hmm. and what I did was to put the white part of it on this side. That's why you can see that this side is white and then this side, which is the black one, just disappears. So it goes from the white part to transparent. And that's how I was able to achieve this particular look on my bottle. And then I'll just go to the next light that I used. Let me just scroll down here a bit. So my next light was also supposed to separate the um, products from the background. Now for this one, I wanted it to be very harsh, very sharp, because I wasn't looking to let it blend in with this background at all. I wanted it to be a clear separation from the background. So this was, this was um, a really sharp light with no gradients to it. And then the next one I had was for the cover here. Now, remember when I talked about creating a new light for each part of the product, just so I can handle, just so I can locate which one isn't working if, if anything just stops working well. This particular light was just for the bottle cover only, nothing else, just that. And you can see that this doesn't even affect the bottle in any way. 
Now, how I did that was to create my lights and then come down to options, click on exclude, and then drag out the stuff that I did not want my lights to affect here into this box. So everything that is here has been excluded from the light. So the light will not affect those things. Now, the next light I created was for my logo on the bottle. Now you can see that each light that is here does something to the product. They're not just lighting everything up like that. Each one lights up a certain part of the product. So this particular one was just to create um, a really nice and sleek reflection on this logo here as well as light it up and then because we're working with a glass object here i knew for a fact that i had to create some sort of real world reflection and by real world i do not mean an actual out there environment i'm talking about a studio hdri but this time around it's supposed to just blend or curve around the product in a more realistic way and that was what I was going for when I created this. You can see that it just adds this really nice reflection and light to the top here. It doesn't do too much for the background and the other parts of the, bot of the bottle, but it just creates this really sweet reflection here that just blends in with this one. So you can tell from this that this product is round here and then it's curved at the top and then it goes smaller here and then it goes straight up. So my light, my, my light setup here was also helping to build the products as well as make it look really nice. So the next thing I did was to add this one. This one, this um, HDRI light also was supposed to separate this from the background. It's just to, it's just, it's just to make what I had already done here look extra. If I turned it off, it would have still, it, it, it would still look good, but just to add a little bit of sweetness to it, basically. And then I had this last light here that was showing at the top here. So guys, this is exactly how I set up my lights for my 3D products renders. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And I hope you've been able to learn 18 or two from it so you can then transfer to your own projects. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much. Bye.